What's the jam? Under Armour. Cool. Doing what? Good morning. Welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church on this beautiful fall crisp morning. 
Um, allegedly, it's going to get warmer in a few days, and then it'll probably snow. Anywho, um, I'm Pastor Michael. I'm happy to see you all here today. A um, couple quick things before we get to all of the fun stuff. Um, is anybody over here needing to announce anything before I start? Go ahead. All are yours. Okay. Um, Becca asked me if I could make an announcement. Uh, you know, she's a counselor at the middle school, and so they have 6th, 7th, and 8th grade girls, plus boys. And she, if you would like to contribute or drop off a little bag of sanitary napkins for the girls, the, not tampons, but the napkins. So I will, she will gladly accept those. Then, um, I think there's something coming up next weekend. I think I've heard it's going to involve children and adults <laughs> acting like children and that kind of thing. Most we, days? Yeah, well, it's most days, but we get to get away with it a little better. <laughs> and so uh, we, I, I think we're set. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We, yes? Question for Barb. If you're a helper, two questions. You should bring candy, but is there extra candy to we'll be have, passed out? We have extra candy. We have the prizes for the games, which we kind of only have two people doing games right now, so hopefully there will be more doing the games. Okay. Okay. So, so, so if we want to be a helper also and yeah. learn a game, come at a quarter of before? Well, I, I would suggest being here at a quarter of anyway. Just to acclimate yourself and to get situated and everything. So. But it looks to be going to be a fun, it's supposed to be a nice night too, so, you know, we'll just uh, play, and then, of course, after thanks, after that comes Thanksgiving, so we'll be working on our Thanksgiving baskets for some families. Awesome. Anything else down that way? Uh, yeah, at business meeting, we discussed uh, coffee hour, and uh, what we've done, I think there was quite a few people that would rather have it after church, and there's other people that want it before church. So we're gonna do it both. We're gonna have uh, after hours where we can see more people and, and see the minister when he's here, hopefully. And, uh, uh, and then, but we'll also have coffee and that available before church too. So just use your own decision what, when you wanna come, or, but uh, have a good time. So you can always start at the early one with regular coffee and then switch to decaf if you need to for the second one. Or if you're like me, just straight through. Um, anything else for the good of the cause? Yes, ma'am. Oh, Anna, sir, back there. Hold on. Wait for the mic. Wait for the mic. Okay, the one announcement's just real quick. If you like a copy of the Upper Room, uh, the new November, December ones are in the narthex. And then we are working on November 3rd, which will be All Saints Day. We're collecting the names. We know most of them but there may be uh, family members or friends that we might not be aware of. So let uh, Teresa or Cindy Harwood or the pastor or I uh, know by next Sunday we like it so that we can start getting the inserts ready. Um, and if family members that are coming want to do a brief write-up. Whatever you give us is what we'll print. So you can be as loquacious as you want to, or you can, uh, I think I've covered it all, but we'd like to have all that information to us so we can get our inserts ready. So again, for those in Cyberland, that'll be Sunday, November 3rd. Uh, and if maybe you've got a significant loss that you'd like honored on All Saints Day, 
get with the pastor or Cindy or Teresa or I. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. And following on from what Fonda said, uh, that day, November 3rd, we will actually be falling back that day. So by the time we finish the service, exactly, and we'll take pictures of Pastor and we'll post that as well. <laughs> But Falling back. we would like to have fellowship time after that special service. So if you would like to bring um, treats that day, either a savory snack or a sweet treat, whatever you'd like to bring, we were going to ask for additional food donations for fellowship on November 3rd. Okay. Anybody else? Once, twice. Fantastic. So that is some of the fun, the business, the, the things we do around here. If you ever have a question about any of it, please see myself or the person you heard uh, speaking about it. I also want to remind you that you are all beautiful children of God, created in the image of God. Therefore, you are loved the way you are. And that includes all of you out there online listening to us or watching us. And just remember that one of the greatest things about our God is we have a God of grace and love. And there's nothing you can do to make that grace and love towards you stop. God will always love you. I'm going to turn things over to our praise band to get us started. Um, and so if you would rise as you are able, try it again. If you would rise as you are able for our first song, and Teresa will fill you in. Okay, our first song is in the red folder. So please take a red folder and turn to number 24. We bring the sacrifice of praise. We will be singing this together twice. And then the second song, you'll use a different book, the Black Hymnal, will be the song Together We Serve in the Black Hymnal. And we'll be seated for that.
gathered together for our opening prayer. Almighty God, you brought creation into being through Christ, and in Christ all things find their purpose. Open our eyes to see the world as your gift and to use your gifts for the sake of Christ, that through the witness of our lives, the gospel may be proclaimed to all people. Amen. In gratitude for all that God has done for us, let us present our gifts to God. Please rise as you are able and join in our doxology on page 95 in the hymnal. God, receive these gifts, which are the product of our labors, and let us not forget the better part of our offering, which is our devotion to the words of life we have received from Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and 
if you would join together with me with the confidence of children of God in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain seated for our next song, hymn number 318, Christ is Alive, in the red hymnals in the pews. Now is the time that we turn to God and lift the things that weigh upon our hearts and our minds, and also then choosing if we wish to lift aloud before God and God's people those things that we want to bring in prayer. Do we have any joys or concerns we'd like to lift aloud this morning? I had asked for prayers before for Chris Girk. He had been um, put into hospice. He came home Wednesday, and they set up a hospital bed in the basement, and Friday morning he was called home. He passed around 4 a.m. with his wife with him, and he was at peace. I'm still asking prayers for Nancy. She's had her third infusion, but they also found, besides the liver cancer, that she has breast cancer. So uh, she needs a lot of prayers, and it's been rough on her. Okay. Um I don't know if the pastor knows this or not, but um, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And if he could come down over here, um, the family of Stony Creek would like to tell you how much we appreciate you and Sarah. Thank you. We know Sarah works hard, too, with our Sunday school and all that you do, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. <clears throat> have others do you have any I was last asked, uh, asked prayers for my daughter Jill who uh, yesterday morning about 730 in the morning 
headed with a group from a church over in uh, off North Territorial Road, and uh, they went to Valdosta, Georgia. They also had two other uh, buses or uh, vans that uh, took two other groups down to Florida to work with the uh, people there, trying to increase their getting back to their own homes and this kind of thing. So it's the prayers for Jill and that group that's gone down. Katie, your brother's name is Chris, right? Brother-in-law, brother sorry, okay. <clears throat> um, I also would like to add uh, prayers for my Uncle Dale, who um, I've mentioned in the past is uh, suffering from cancer. He fell uh, sometime Friday morning and fractured both of his wrists. So he is currently in the hospital um, with plaster splints, um, and I know that he's already dealing with pain from the cancer, but this is now kind of compounding that. So um, I ask that you please keep him in your prayers um, and also want to express again, thank you, for, um, thank you for being the people that you are. As a pastor, it is a joy to get to be with a group of people that truly embody what it means to be Christ in the world. And you guys are a big part of me waking up in the morning looking forward to doing the work that I get to do. So thank you for, for that as well. If you would open up your thin black hymnals from the faith we sing to number 2193, and we will sing, Lord, listen to your children praying is our invitation to prayer. This morning for our prayers, when you hear me say, let us pray to the Lord, I invite you to reply with the words, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church throughout the world that we may follow Christ our head and be blameless in living the gospel of reconciliation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations of the world, that all may live without fear of oppression, poverty, or war, we especially lift up the Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Gaza, and Palestine. Let us pray to the Lord. For the earth, that we may wisely use its resources for the benefit of humankind and offer help wherever natural disaster has fractured human trust in the goodness of creation, especially all of the areas that have been affected by the hurricanes and the storms. And God, we also especially lift Jill into your hands as she goes with others to Georgia and other places in that same affected area to help in the hurricane recovery efforts. Please watch over her and all of those in that effort. Keep them safe and help them to be able to help those in their greatest time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have For the leaders of the nations, presidents, prime ministers, and all others, that they may honor justice, protect the weak, and serve the common good working together for the betterment of all humanity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have For our communities and neighborhoods, that all may dwell in harmony, let us pray to the Lord. For our enemies, that we may find reconciliation with them for the sake of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who are sick and in trouble, especially we lift up Dale, Nancy, as well as the family of Chris who you have called home to you, that they may find healing, peace, and a sense of your love and support throughout all of those in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people offered in steadfast faith and hope in your care for us. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And if you would please join me aloud in our prayer for illumination. O oh God, as the scriptures are read and the gospel proclaimed, open our ears to hear your word, open our eyes to see your truth, and open our hearts to receive your grace. Amen. Before we get to the scripture, first scripture for the morning, can somebody help me and tell me when we're gonna have earlier daylight? I just hate bumping around in the dark in the morning. Does anyone know? Okay, <laughs> all right, I feel better, I think. Scripture reading today is from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12 through 17. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. For here we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others for which such sacrifices God is pleased. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Now, if you'll um, stand as you're able, our next hymn is Be Thou My Vision, in your hymnal, I think, 451. Please be seated. Our second reading for this morning can be found beginning on page 1028 in the Bibles in the pews. We are in the 10th chapter of Luke's Gospel, beginning at verse 38, going through verse 42. This section of text carries the header at the home of Martha and Mary. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. 
Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Still speaking God, saving and teaching creator, there is still so much we can learn from you and so much more we need to open ourselves to hearing from you. Help us to spend our time on this earth wisely, lovingly, and in listening to you. Help us through the power of the Holy Spirit to not let the things in life that will not matter in the end consume us and cause us to lose focus on where you are moving and who you are loving. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the concept of, of being busy, it's, it's really rather complicated when, when we take a step back and really kind of look into it a little bit deeper. We have sayings about being busy like, being busy as a bee. We have countless quotes that have been recorded over time that, that seem to support this idea of constantly being busy and how it actually can be a good thing. Lord Byron once wrote, the busy have no time for tears. Mark Burnett claimed the best person to get something done is a busy person. And we actually also probably have just as many similar or just as many quotes that it really would argue the opposite about the dangers of busyness. Socrates once opined, beware the barrenness of a busy life. And Brene Brown warned that crazy busy is a great armor, is a great way for numbing. What a lot of us do is that we stay so busy and so out in front of our life that the truth of how we are feeling and what we really need can't catch up with us. So is it true, are, are people, as it seems to have been claimed a lot lately, are people really more busy today than in years past? I will say that there definitely has, has been a trend, at least in our country, but in several others, towards working longer hours, using less vacation and personal time, all in the name of getting ahead. Technology has certainly made us more accessible to our employers, as well as our family and friends. That has led to some really blurred lines between our work time and our personal time, often creating a feeling of perpetual busyness, but also feeling the need to be more available to our family and friends, which also causes feelings of that perpetual busyness and, and need to be available. Our society, both within our own country and in many others around the world, we have this cultural narrative that busyness is, or it equates busyness with productivity and success. While younger generations have begun pushing back against this and putting a greater importance on quality of life, taking time to smell the roses, if you will, there is still this great stigma about being perceived as lazy that has led to a drastic and continual increase in mental health concerns and fatigue about how busy we are. And societal expectations, cultural traditions, and, and the building responsibilities have been driving our busyness for quite a long time. We have a perfect example of just this in our reading from Luke's Gospel this morning in the home of Martha and Mary. Yes, this is the same Martha and Mary who are sisters to Lazarus, the same sisters that Jesus has come to know pretty much like family and has spent time with throughout his time in ministry. And in this section of text, we find Martha seemingly falling victim to the busyness bug. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha had opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted 
by all the preparations that had to be made. I'm going to be honest with you here. I don't really care for the term distracted in describing Martha. And, and I don't care for it because it makes it sound like that she is wasting time, like messing around, not, not doing anything of any importance or value. And we'll get to that in a moment here, but at face value, I just really don't think it's fair. Because Martha was busy making preparations, which she would have been expected to be doing based on societal standards and faith traditions of where she lived. She was opening her home to Jesus and the disciples. She had expectations about her hospitality skills that had been placed upon her and women for generations. Martha saw the things that distracted her as things that she needed to do because that is what was expected of her by her own people and really the world as she knew it. So I kind of wrestled with this for a little bit, and I finally went through and looked at several other translations of Scripture to see if distracted is the most commonly used term, and if not, or even if it is still, what other terms have been used in its place, and how that might shift or affect how we look at Martha, especially in the story. The word distracted is used in the New International Version, which is what we have in the pews here. It is used in the New King James Version, the English Standard Version, the New Revised Standard Version Updated Edition, and the Original Revised Standard Version. Those are all typically Bibles, translations that you would find in many Protestant uh, churches. Interestingly, though, at least to me, the original King James Version does not use distracted, even though the new version does. The original King James says that Martha was cumbered about much serving. Cumbered meaning uh, hampered or hindered or burdened by, which to me at least is not the same as distracted. The common English Bible says, by contrast, Martha was preoccupied with getting everything ready for their meal which, again, in my mind, doesn't really sound quite as negative, maybe, as distracted. And then the Good News translation says that Martha was upset over all the work she had to do. Note the words had to do. Work that was expected of her, whether by herself or by custom and tradition, either way. Work that she had to do. So I guess it's fair to say that even the biblical scholars who, who work on these varying translations, even they cannot completely agree on just what Martha's situation and reality here really were. Some translated that she was distracted and infer that it was really completely her own fault, seemingly ignoring the years and years of tradition and social expectations that were placed on her and women of that time. And others seem to kind of cut Martha some slack and almost even acknowledge that her busy work was not completely of her own making. And really, I empathize with Martha here because even in our world today, there are still traditions and perceived expectations that I know at least I have allowed to lead me to an almost constant state of busyness and stress at times. I would imagine really that most of us, if we are really honest with ourselves and honest about stuff like this, we would probably all relate very closely to Martha in the situation in one way or another, especially comparing it to maybe certain times or events in our own lives. But then, then we have Mary, Martha's sister Mary, sitting at the feet of Jesus, the teacher, the coming Messiah, listening to his every word, not letting anything distract her from his teaching. Mary, 
was doing it right. And we know that because Jesus pretty much says that when Martha comes to him, begging him to basically kind of shame Mary into getting up and helping her with all of this work. It says that she went to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. One thing is needful. Mary has chosen the good portion, which shall not be taken away from her. And that is actually where the chapter and this interaction ends, at least as far as we know based on what is recorded in Scripture, because the next chapter begins with Jesus teaching the Lord's Prayer. I'll be honest, I, I'd kind of like to know what Mar Martha's response was to Jesus, whether if it was audible or just maybe in her own mind. Every time I read that part of this passage with Jesus saying, Martha, Martha, I, I hear it more of like the Brady Bunch of Marsha, 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 Martha, Martha, Martha. Um, you see, Martha was expecting Jesus to, to share in her frustration that, that Mary has, has abandoned her duties and her responsibilities in helping her sister Martha, preparing everything based on what was expected. And Martha wanted Jesus, someone who Mary listened to and respected, we can safely assume as Mary is the one who was at his feet listening to his every word, Martha wanted Jesus to get Mary to get up and help. But Jesus tells Martha that Mary's actions are okay. In fact, they're better because Mary has chosen the good portion and that it will never be taken away from her. So is Jesus right here? Was Martha the one who, who is an error, who made the mistake in choosing her actions as opposed to those of Mary? Well, I mean, yeah, of course, it's Jesus. He's always right. Jesus is, is trying to tell Martha that, yes, I understand that there are these preparations, these things that are expected to be done, but Martha, I need you to understand in this moment that there is something more important than that. There is something that I am trying to give to you and all of those presents here that will always forever mean so much more than whether or not the, the meal was on time, that everything was placed perfectly. There are more valuable things than filling the societal expectations that are placed upon you. Jesus is trying to, to open Martha's eyes to what he is offering and how it far outweighs anything else and is truly priceless. But again, I'll be honest, I still cannot completely blame Martha because I am pretty sure that I would be experiencing similar feelings. I might not have expressed them out loud the way that she did. I mean, besides being passive aggressive is a lot much more fun. But I would not be surprised at myself presented with someone of Jesus' importance in the community coming to my home that I would too get caught up in trying to be the perfect host, making sure everything was just so, trying to create the perfect environment and experience. I'll be honest, in many ways, I, I really envy Mary because she recognized in the moment at least at some level, what was more important for her in the grand scheme of life. It was not that Mary was being lazy or trying to make Martha's life difficult. This is not an example of sibling rivalry by any means. Mary was able to discern something in the moment that led her to sit at Jesus' feet and give him her full attention, not just listening to what he was teaching, but drawing it in, absorbing it, making it a part of her. So the question that is in our world right now today, what are we supposed to do? Are we always going to be distracted by busyness and miss 
the good portion? Probably not, especially if we, if we really make a conscious effort to, to pay attention and keep our hearts and our eyes and our minds open to how God is moving. But in the times that we do miss the good portion and are distracted, if someone comes to us, especially someone who we love and respect and know that love and respect us, if someone comes to us and points out to us that we are missing something, just as Jesus does with Martha, we need to be humble enough to take a moment and consider what that person is trying to tell us. Will those people always be right that we are in fact missing something? Not necessarily. But I really believe it doesn't hurt to take a moment to consider what that person might be trying to tell us. That is a big part of the good news in this passage. This passage could easily be used to condemn Martha and how she has just completely missed the boat and she's not getting it and Mary is almost perfect because she does get it. But that's not what's happening. Because even when we find ourselves in Martha's situation, which we will from time to time, there are always still ways to be shown the truth and the reality of a situation we are in. Yes, we absolutely should be trying to avoid getting into those situations and habits in the first place. Faith is not a spectator sport. It requires action and work. But we're not perfect. We're human. We will miss things from time to time. We will make mistakes. That is part of being human. I think it is much more important that when someone else tries to help us to recognize that there are things that we are missing, those good portions, if you will, it is much more important that we take those moments to consider what we are being told. God speaks to all of us in different ways. You probably remember me saying at least once, I have friends and colleagues who have who believe that they have heard God audibly speaking to them. I've never had that experience to date. However, I will tell you that I hear God's voice in the words of others. I have heard God speak to me through Sarah, my wife. I have heard God speak to me through someone that I actually, in the moment, was at odds with. I really believe that God will speak to all of us in the ways that we are most likely to hear. What's on us is to be willing to try and hear and to listen. There are always going to be things in this life that if we allow them to, will take up every second of our day and every ounce of our energy. And many times, in hindsight, we may even regret getting sucked into those things. So yes, we do need to take some time to smell the roses, some time to maybe sit at the Lord's feet and listen. It is important to give yourself a break from time to time. That is the reason God created the Sabbath. Even God, the creator of everything, the Almighty, rested on the seventh day. We need to cut ourselves a little bit of slack give ourselves a little bit of grace because there may be times that we miss something that could truly have an impact on us in ways we might never, never even imagine. When we, when we don't take the time to try and listen, we can miss out on these beautiful life-changing events. The good news is that it's not a one-time thing. God doesn't try once and say, all right, well, you missed it. Good luck. I really believe that God will continue again and again to speak to you, to continue to try to get your attention and help you to see the better portion. Our brothers and sisters, our siblings in the United Church of Christ carry the tagline that God is still speaking. And I really believe that that is true even when we might not always be aware of it or paying attention. God doesn't speak just to hear God speak. When God talks, amazing things happen. 
And I promise you, when you hear God speaking directly to you, even when you're not 100% sure that that's what's happening, but I promise you, you will begin to see this world, the people in it, and all of creation in new and beautiful ways that you've never imagined. Our job is to do our best to try and listen and to try and help our fellow siblings in Christ when we can see that maybe they aren't hearing the message that God is trying to give to them, but doing so in lovingly and gentle ways, encouraging them. We are better as a community. We are better together than apart. When we take the time, step away from the busyness of the world, and I again know how hard that is, but when we are able to do it, those are some of the most amazing moments in life and they will help you in ways you could have never even thought you might have needed help. When you hear your creator's voice, you will come alive in ways that will never leave you. Amen. If you would rise as you are able for our closing hymn number 415, Take Up Thy Cross, found in the red hymnals in the pews. Fellow siblings in Christ, you beautiful children of God, made in the image of God, go now and in peace. May the God of reconciliation bless you, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you, and the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you this day and forevermore. Amen.